Welcome back everybody, Coasters and Places here with another exciting video and this one I'm going to talk about some of the most overrated coasters that I've ever experienced. So I actually have eight I want to talk about and these eight coasters, they're actually all phenomenal coasters. But in my opinion, they're just overrated for what they are later up. In fact, some of these coasters are honestly top ten coasters. Um, but they're just overrated for one reason or another and I'm going to talk about why I think each of these coasters are overrated in this video. So remember this is an opinion based video. Your opinion will likely be different from me. And then again, you may agree with some of my picks on these overrated coasters. What coaster do you find the most overrated? Or do you think that some of my picks are definitely not overrated, maybe even underrated? Let me know definitely what you think after watching this video. But let's go ahead and get started. Again, these are in no particular order. It's just eight coasters that I just find to be pretty overrated, honestly. So the first coaster I'm going to talk about that I think is pretty overrated is Mystic Timbers over at Kings Island. Okay, so I will admit, Mystic Timbers, definitely an amazing coaster. It has some phenomenal airtime and a great layout. Love the setting in the woods. It's incredibly smooth to this day, and it's one of the best GCIs out there. This has often been called by some enthusiasts and GP the best coaster at Kings Island. I'm just like, what? When I hear this, I'm like, wait, this is the same park that has Diamondback. Like, I love Diamondback. I think Diamondback, to me, has more airtime than Mystic Timbers. Uh, this can be called the best GCI from people. And I'm just like, mm, Gold Striker exists. Gold Striker is completely nuts. And I think Gold Striker is the best GCI in my opinion. So... The thing that just killed me, and I'm just like, this thing is just, this is overrated. Uh, people talked about it was the best night ride in the park. That honor goes to the beast, hands down. And just, again, people saying it's the best coaster in the park. And I'm just like, no. Again, a fantastic, ri fantastic ride, but it does have great air time, but it just does feel a little short to me. And I just think that this is, Kings Island such a great park with so many other great coasters. I actually prefer the Beast to this. That could be nostalgia, partially, but um, again, the Beast does have a superior night ride. It doesn't have the shed as a gimmick. But again, I do get the love for Mystic Timbers, and I do love Mystic Timbers. But just the fact that this was just so hyped up and everybody's talking about it and still raves about it being like this fantastic awesome ride world class I mean it is but it's not as great as people hype it up to be next I think a coaster that's overrated is Millennium Force at Cedar Point so this coaster has unfamously also earned a nickname of Millennium Forceless wouldn't completely agree with that, but I do get where people are coming from with this nickname. Okay, so first of all, the lift hill, going up the lift hill, seeing the beautiful views of Lake Erie and the views of Cedar Point. Beautiful. Absolutely can't beat that. I love that part of Millennium Force. First drop is absolutely phenomenal. But after that, to me, it's good. Don't get me wrong. But... It's just not one of the best gigas out there. And it's definitely not number one at the park, as some people say it is. Um, some people say it's number two, and I don't even think it's number two at Cedar Point. Is it a fantastic coaster? Yes, it is smooth. Um, I think I prefer coasters that have more airtime, and Millennium Force provides some airtime, but just not a lot. More about the speed. And the layout's kind of a little boring too. 
so people talk about this still as one of the best coasters out there and top five for a lot of people and um, to me it's just not that i think it's overrated it's not the best giga not the best coaster at cedar point even is it a great ride yes but it's just definitely overhyped so this next coaster sky rush hershey park this is a pretty controversial coaster. I would generally say most people like the airtime and the layout. It's a very unique coaster for North America. And I do like Sky Rush a lot. My thing of it is, is before they changed the restraints, the restraints were god awful. It would hurt so bad. Hence the nickname Thigh Crush. It rightfully got and deserved that nickname but here's the thing um especially before wildcat revenge came around sky rush was talked about so much at hershey park it was like no other coaster at hershey park existed it so overshadowed great coasters such as fahrenheit and storm runner which are also intimates that are absolutely incredible coasters i mean sky rush is an incredible coaster but the thing of it is it's just more or less with this one is how much and how intense it's been talked about. Like, people don't shut up about Sky Rush. And it gets annoying. It's like, ugh, there's other coasters in the world, there's other coasters at Hershey Park. And I do think I kind of prefer Pandemonium in certain ways to Sky Rush, but Sky Rush is still a great ride. But please, like, people like just note that there's other coasters at Hershey Park besides Sky Rush. Next is Phoenix at Knobles. So Phoenix continuously gets awarded the Best Wooden Coaster Award for the Golden Ticket Awards. It's gotten it several years. And while I think Phoenix is an incredible ride, smooth, and oh my gosh, the airtime with the buzz bar restraints is crazy. It's almost like, how is this safe? But, but, it's like no other coaster has a chance against this of ever winning the Golden Ticket Awards. It's just like, oh, automatically, hey, let's throw this at Phoenix. No other coaster we want to talk about. Just Phoenix. Um, it, it's hard to say, is this really the best winning coaster? Is this really what the GP is saying? It, and I don't think enthusiasts are necessarily saying this is the best coaster, especially when coasters like El Toro and Lightning Rod exist. Um, just for this to be voted like the best wooden coaster as much as it is, it's like, this thing is overrated. Like, why is this happening? You know, there's other great coasters out there. Uh, wooden coasters that deserve a spot and that I think are better than Phoenix. Is Phoenix wonderful? Yes. Is it very well maintained? Yes. And it's crazy. The, the airtime on Phoenix, it's just absolutely nuts and wonderful and I love it. But as far as it being the best wooden coaster, I, I just don't think it is that. Intimidator 305, now known as Project 305, but I'm still going to call it Intimidator 305 or I-305. That's what it is to me. Is another overrated coaster. I don't think it's as overrated as some of the coasters on this list. It's still overrated. So it's often been called the best giga. Mm, don't think so. And that's, that's what kills me. Just like the best giga, no it's not. Is it a great ride? Absolutely. But it's just not the best giga out there. So, but anyway, continuing on with that. I'd like to say the thing about Intimidator 305, I-305, that kills me is just the fact that it is so intense that it can be overwhelming. So it's focused more on intensity, being kind of snappy, and for me, I just prefer a coaster with airtime. I'm not saying coasters that are intense aren't good because I-305 is a great coaster. I'm definitely not going to argue that at all. It's a wonderful coaster. 
It's smooth, it's not rough, but I just feel like there's a couple areas where I feel like, hey, why isn't there airtime here? There could actually be airtime here. Um, it could have just been a better layout. We could have just done so much more with Intimidator 305 that we didn't do. And sadly, it's just, I think it's just overrated for what it is. So going to one coaster out of the country of the United States, I'm going to talk about Nemesis at Alton Towers. So I wrote this and I was actually very underwhelmed. I had read that this coaster was one of the best inverts, best coaster in the UK, absolutely world-class invert. And I wrote it and I'm like, um, okay this is okay like I didn't come off thinking wow oh my gosh I think it's very unique how Alton Towers has had to work with the terrain and keep this coaster below the tree line did literally into the ground um, but I just was underwhelmed honestly Nemesis Inferno at Thorpe Park I thought was a lot better I think most inverts I've rode are a lot better than Nemesis, honestly. Is Nemesis a good ride? Yeah. It's setting very unique how they've worked with the terrain. And it does feel speedy. I mean, I don't think it's rough or anything like that. I just, I was expecting more out of it. And for this to be hyped up as much as it was, even if I was going to be disappointed, um wouldn't have been this disappointed. I just don't get how this is a top tier invert. Uh, to me, it's middle tier, maybe middle lower, honestly. As I said, great theming, great setting, still a good coaster, but it's not a top invert like people claim it to be. I just don't think it is. I think it could be a lot whippier. I think it could be more intense. And it's just not those things to me. Maybe I went on a bad day and had a bad ride. But I just wasn't overly impressed or shocked by Nemesis. Next is Gemini at Cedar Point. So this I've heard people say is the best racing coaster out there. Don't think so. And that it's, I've even been told, oh my gosh, it's a must ride at Cedar Point. It's great. It's fabulous. And I wrote it and I was underwhelmed, to say the least. Just like with Nemesis, I was underwhelmed. I found it to be pretty rough in spots, honestly. It wasn't like the roughest arrow or the roughest coaster out there. There's way worse, but I did find it to be rough in spots. And yeah, the racing aspect's pretty cool. It gives you some fun, but I found the hills to be kind of shallow to me. Didn't give much airtime. Like, I just felt like this ride was kind of boring for what it is and to be named like an incredible racing coaster and be talked about as highly as it is I was like why I, I just didn't understand it to me it just doesn't really deliver much forces um, or airtime or pretty much anything just fun but that's just not how people hype this thing up to be um but that's just my opinion on Gemini. The very last coaster I'm going to talk about is King to Call. So King to Call is probably definitely one of the least overrated on this list. But it just gets talked about simply because it is, at the moment of this video, the tallest coaster in the world and one of the fastest. So obviously it's going to get a lot of hype. It's going to get a lot of attention. Just because it, though it has these incredible stats doesn't make it one of the best coasters because it's not. Top Thrill bef Dragster before it, you know, it closed and was transformed. The Top Thrill 2, in my opinion, was better because it was smoother and it didn't have the awful restraints. That's the thing about King to Call. Holding it back, I think, is those awful restraints. It can be a little bumpy. Uh, not awful by any means, but just a little bumpy. Um, but again, I think it's just overrated because it has these incredible stats and people talk about that. But just because it does have those incredible stats doesn't mean it's 
you know, one of the best coasters in the world. Great coaster, not as deserving of the hype as it gets, basically. So again, I thank you for watching this video. Please like and subscribe. Most, a vast majority of my views are coming from people that aren't subscribed. Please subscribe, it helps my channel grow and put out more content like this. And let me know what you disagree with. Just be respectful because remember, we all have our own opinions. Doesn't mean it's right or wrong. Thanks again.